What's going on squad? You know, when I first started learning about isometrics a couple years ago, I was very fascinated with this method of training. As I was going through Paul Wade's isometric manual, this term kept popping up and I really wanted to share this with you. Now we have a video on it, but let's talk about Hebb's rule. Hebb's rule means muscle fibers that wire together, fire together. Now, why exactly is that important? On our No Limit TikTok, when our videos first started to go viral, a lot of these teenagers mostly started asking this question that's cool bro that you pulled that number on that machine or device or whatever does it actually translate into the weight room that's still a valid question in my opinion here's why it does when we're looking at the world of strength development the most significant factor is neurological recruitment each of our muscle cells are connected to the nervous system by a neuromuscular junction a mini neurological switch which turns that cell on or off this is called our strength hardware individual muscle cells have have no dial on them. They are binary. They either fire completely or they don't fire at all. Biologists call this the all or none law. As a result, how much force a muscle can develop depends on how many of the muscle cells get switched on. How effectively our nervous system can turn on those muscle cells represents our strength software. Most untrained individuals have terribly inefficient software. They have the same number of muscle cells as strength athletes, but their nervous systems are not as good at recruiting those cells. So whereas a strong man or a kung fu master might be able to recruit 80% of his cells, the untrained Joe will only be able to manage maybe 30%. And this right here answers that age old question as to why some individuals can be small, but far more powerful than much larger men. The small man can have next generation software while the larger guy is still working with Windows 2.0. Fortunately, anyone can improve the efficiency of their neurological recruitment. You can upgrade your strength software. This can be achieved by forcing as many of your muscle cells to fire as possible maximal recruitment and doing this repeatedly doing so causes the neural pathways which make the muscle cells switch on to become more efficient communicators according to a neurological principle known as Hebb's rule later paraphrased by the neuroscientist Sigrid Lowell as cells which fire together wire together essentially repeated maximal muscle contractions are what make us stronger and the more force your muscles repeatedly generate, stronger you'll get. When I first read that in Paul Wade's isometric manual, I got really excited. At that time, I had already been lifting for over a decade and I knew the basics of how strength training and hypertrophy and strength development worked. I had already naturally found myself lifting on the heavier end of the force velocity curve. And so I had started becoming very strong despite me only weighing about 170 pounds. Now, not the pinnacle of 170 pound strength, mind you, not at all. But I did notice that I was starting to outlift people that were bigger than me. And it's because my software was getting upgraded because I was always at the higher end of that force velocity curve. I was training for strength. The contractions were all in. Every time I did a heavy lift in the weight room, I was at near my limit. It was never more than five reps. And I really enjoyed training strength like that. My contractile strength was very high. Now, speaking of contractile strength, we need to talk about MVC, the second second topic of this video. MVC stands for Maximum Voluntary Contraction. In isometric training, how hard we train our intensity can be measured in two ways. It can either be subjectively measured as effort or objectively measured as a percentage of the maximum force that we can exert. In studies, this latter method is known by the abbreviation MVC or Maximum Voluntary Contraction. Earlier studies of isometrics demonstrated that we don't need to use maximum force during isometric holds to gain decent results in strength. For example, there was a study by Hedinger who noted excellent strength gains beyond the threshold of 40 to 50% of maximum. Although he did suggest that it was more practical for athletes to just aim for maximal contractions anyway. But as the research went on, it demonstrated that there is still a clear relationship between intensity of tension, how hard you pull or push the handle, and strength development. Simply put, the harder we try during our strength training, the better our result. One of the reasons this immediately made sense when I read it. And we can look at it in this graph, the Ivanov isometric intensity graph. The different curved lines on the graph represent different 
different intensities of tension. 40% tension, 60% tension, 80% tension, and maximal 100% tension. Strength increase as a result of those efforts is represented by the vertical axis of that graph. As we can see, strength increases occur even at 40% tension. However, the higher the degree of tension, the better the strength gain. Maximum tension, pushing or pulling against the handle as hard as possible, gives the best results in strength. Further backed by the Cow and Herbert Optimization of Isometric Strength Training Intensity Research Study. So the harder we push or pull, the better strength gains we're going to get. Now I feel like this is some rare footage, but when I first hit RDLs for 405, this was 2017. Actually, when I first ran into the Bioneers channel and I started getting interested in isometrics, I started using that in the power rack. Sadly, I don't have any footage of me doing isometric deadlifts on the power rack, but I was using it and then I noticed the increase in my strength. Now, at this time, I was 168 pounds and I noticed that even though my hands were completely tore up, that the weight was going up and it surprised me. And I thought to myself, wow, this works. I want to talk about hypertrophy here because while my strength was going up and I love that I can give an example of myself in this video for you guys, not all areas got a hypertrophic response. And that because of Henneman's size principle, the third topic we're going to talk about today. I was being effective, but at the same time, I wasn't. Let me explain why. What is effective training? A common way to judge the efficacy of a training method is to look at fiber recruitment. When we want to increase strength or size, our goal should be to recruit as many muscle fibers as possible. This is due to a phenomenon in neurology known as Henneman's size principle, which states that the largest muscle fibers, the type two fast twitch, those with the greatest capacity to respond with strength or size increases are always the last fibers in line to be recruited. As a result, whether strength or size is your goal, we need to recruit the maximum number of muscle fibers that we can during our training in order to reach those large fibers. Henneman's size principle also states that the only way to recruit more fibers is through higher intensity contractions. Lower intensity contractions, light activities like jogging or walking, only recruit the smaller fibers, the type one, which are useless for size and strength. They adapt to stress by improving their oxidative metabolism, by gaining stamina, which is why champion marathon runners are never big and strong. Type two fibers, on the other hand, respond to stress by hypertrophy. These are the fibers you want to recruit if you're interested in getting bigger and stronger. Think of a sprinter. So maximal fiber recruitment is a good way of judging the efficacy of a resistance training program. Now I said that I was being efficient yet not efficient. We need to ask ourselves just how intensely do our muscle fibers need to contract to maximize fiber recruitment? It depends on which muscles we're training. Different muscles possess different ratios of small to large fibers. The forearms and muscles of the ankle, for example, have evolved for endurance, thus have more small fibers. As a result, they reach maximal recruitment at lower levels of contraction because there are fewer large fibers to recruit with bigger contractions. The big workhorse muscles, thighs, chest, back, and upper arms have higher ratios of large fibers and so require higher levels of contraction before maximal recruitment is obtained. If you guys look at this photo of me back then, all right, you're going to notice that something is off once we start to go below the waist. Don't think about that too much. So I tend to train in the same way for years and I didn't realize this was on me that I was making such a rookie mistake when it came to training lower body. So I trained them hard. I never not trained them hard. I wasn't training them enough. As a result, my upper body looked a couple years ahead of my lower body. When it came time for lower body to perform, it still performed. They were still strong, but there was not enough time under tension for these bigger workhorse muscles that we just talked about. A study published in the journal Brain Research demonstrated that maximal fiber recruitment of the biceps only occurred at 88% of maximal contraction. So using the biceps as an example, our goal in resistance training is at least 88% of maximal contraction to be optimally effective. Anything under 88% in biceps training will not be as effective as it could be. Hence why my legs weren't as big as they could have been. I wasn't training them enough
off. I was training them for strength, but I wasn't training them enough to get a hypertrophic response. It will still be effective to some degree. It's just that because energy is being wasted on lower intensity contractions. It's a less efficient way to train. Working at intensities which don't recruit the maximum amount of muscle fibers is like driving a vehicle to a destination in the wrong gear. We still get there, but we could have got there a lot faster if we were just on gear five and not gear two. I hope this was of some value to the squad. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. So watch and see you next video.